Well, they made Graham's life so good. When my poor darling had dementia and the girls were just so lovely to him. My eyesight is not good at all. So they do everything to help me. To have the Bromelo care does enable me to stay home. Otherwise, I couldn't. And this is what I appreciate so much, that I love you all. I think, I think our philosophy is really quite simple, but it's not that common. So if I was a client, what would I be looking for from an organisation, from a person that was coming into my home to support me? And the other thing I guess that's been really important to me as we've grown over the years is to maintain that focus, but to also run, operate the business along really sound ethical values. Well, the company, the company has grown incredibly over 25 years. I mean, 25 years ago, I was it. I can remember days like this where I'd be out in the field cleaning gutters for clients, uh, mowing lawns, any small business, it's, it, it's a one-stop shop. And I was that in those early years. But progressively, it changed. I choose to work for Bromelow because their, their values really echo mine. Um, when I first rang in to talk to the company, Paul was the person who answered the phone. It, 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 initially, it was probably for my own selfish reasons because the job suited me, it was local, um, it was the hours suited me, and it came with a car. And so I chose Bromelow for those selfish reasons. It didn't take long for me to realise that Bromelow was different. It was a I stayed because of the ethos of Bromelow. People, people feel that they are being looked after. It's actually really inspiring um, hearing Paul talk about all the upcoming things that are going on with Bromelow and the inspiration that he gives us all to approach the next day with more drive. I used to be a tradie and it was very unfulfilling, but this job fulfills me completely. I get the most joy out of um, I guess one, being appreciated, which you don't always get at home. <laughs> you know you're making a difference in someone's life. You know, you're sort of helping just with their day-to-day -day things and, and keeping them at home rather than them having to get to the stage to go into care. We help the client as much as they need it while still maintaining their dignity, um, their self-worth. So we don't go in there and say, oh, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. We help them with what they can't do, and what they can do, we let them do it. So I always actually encourage the clients to make me a cup of tea, because they love doing it. It's something to look forward to, and then they do things that you need help with. If they didn't come and help me, I would, I would be, you know, not finding life as easy as I do find it. And the carers are, well, I don't know how they choose them because they're always nice. Paul knows what he's doing when he chooses the people uh, for the Bromelo staff. I've never thought of leaving Bromelo and going and asking for another carer because uh, I, feel, uh, I feel satisfied and uh, enjoy the people who come to help me. They're friends. There have been many heartfelt moments during my role. A couple have stood out lately. A widow, 70 years of marriage, when a family came uh, to help her through the time. She left them instructions to let me in and not treat me like a, like a cleaner. I was a friend. It is really nice when you get those relationships with people and sort of you have that bond with them and they can know that they can rely on you um, and you sort of you do appreciate when they're really appreciative of you and what you've done so I think um, it's always a professional relationship but it's always something really rewarding for both parties. I go to a young lady with cerebral palsy and she has 
about one about five carers that go to her regularly, and she has a uh, a rating system between one and five. One being best, five being worst. And I've been sitting around about three or four for the last six months, but now I've hit one, so I'm very happy about that. <laughs> you almost become a member of the family after a while, like for, especially for people that live by themselves. It's like your visit can be the highlight of their week. You know, they're kind of they're by the door waiting for you when you arrive, and it's a, it's a nice feeling. It's nice to feel like you're important to someone. Yeah, one of my, probably, probably one of my favorite moments was, uh, it was an older gentleman who was, he was describing a song to me that he'd heard some, from something in the 20s and all he could remember was the first couple of lyrics and we were able to go online, I found the lyrics, found the name of the song and then we actually found a YouTube recording of the song and I played it for him and the look on his face when he heard this song from 70 years ago that he thought he'd never hear again was like, it's, that was priceless. Like that really made my day, it made his day and it made my day too. So it was nice to be able to help him in that way. I ask you confidentially, ain't she sweet? Ain't she nice? Look her over once or twice. Well, I hope I went to heaven it wasn't better than this. I'm say, I want to go back. <laughs> They're just, just a wonderful help to me, a wonderful help, and I do look forward to them coming. Especially when it's crossword day. <laughs> I'm very, very thankful for Bromelo. Well, Bromelo is about to celebrate its 25th anniversary, and I'm incredibly proud of the of the success that we've had in that time. Um, there are so many people that have played a role in that. Um, I've been very lucky to have worked with some wonderful people and I've surrounded myself with good people who make me look good. Um, our staff have been wonderful in that time. I'm proud of the fact that we've provided meaningful and real employment to probably hundreds of staff members over that time. I'm proud of the fact that our clients have supported us so loyally for 25 years and the fact that we've been able to support thousands and thousands of Sunshine Coast residents to remain living independently in their own homes. Now we get caught up in our day-to-day -day lives and sometimes you know, you don't take time to just stop and step back and reflect on, on what we've done. And I do that. And, you know, Trish, my wife, she often says, Paul, you, should, you need to just stop and think about, you know, where you've come in 25 years. And when she, when she makes me stop, you know, <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's a great feeling to just look at where we started from, a one-man show, to where we are now the things that we've achieved, but by golly, the things that are still out there waiting to be achieved. You know, there's so much potential within this organisation. It's only limited by our capacity to dream and to dare to do it. <laughs>